lumbar spine stabilization patterns that people often get into trouble with is this what's called this extension compression strategy. And I first heard this from Rich Ulm, who is, um, he teaches a lot within the chiropractic profession, both to strength and conditioning coaches, chiropractors, physical therapists. He's very, very heavily influenced by DNS. And we have trained in DNS in our office as well. And the thing to think about is if you lack poor lumbo pelvic stability or control, a lot of times we get into what's called this open scissors, meaning our pelvis is spilling water out the front, our rib cage is elevated, and we kind of have this open scissors. And what that tends to do is we see it a lot, I see it a lot in the athletes I treat down at Creighton is we create just too much extension compression here in the lumbar spine. So if you're somebody that gets done with the run and you kind of have that achy, broadband lower back pain, um, you get done playing your sport, it's because you probably are lacking appropriate control through your core and then you're tending to kind of use those big overdeveloped erector spinae muscles that kind of tether the spine in the back. So if you think about, we're going to show you a little bit of an exercise. It's a breathing exercise to kind of create this elongation of the spine. Now we don't just want to flex it and round it, we want to be able to elongate it from a neutral position. So if you think about, this is a, an old phone cord. And what I like to think about is we're gonna unravel the spine through this elongation. And it's just like going from this position where we're kind of this hyperextension, we're all bound up and we're able to stay neutral, but also elongate it. So if we can kind of improve our elongation, we know we're gonna improve our range of motion, specifically our rotation. So the best way to do that is in this kind of um, all fours position. You're gonna go, it's gonna kind of look like child's pose. So if you go, your knees are just a little bit wider than your hips and you're gonna kind of sit your butt back down and you're gonna come down on your elbows. Now we're gonna keep our spine long, neutral. Um, we're gonna focus on like, almost like somebody's pulling us up from our head. So if you think about that phone cord, we're gonna unravel that back. We're gonna go down into our low, onto our elbows here, tuck our chin, sit back on our heels. And then when we're in this position, all we're gonna focus on is actually breathing with our diaphragm into our thighs. So we should feel our bellies kind of push into our thighs and we wanna focus on that unraveling. So getting in this position, it looks a lot harder than it is, um, or look, it's a lot harder than it actually looks. We're gonna just kind of hold that. We're gonna do 10 to 15 breaths, able to maintain that position, kind of keep our spine neutral, focus on elongation. And then we're gonna exhale, we're still gonna be able to breathe, but I want you to be able to kind of create that tension and that elongation in your lower back. So what I want you to think about when you're doing that exercise, a great time to do it is either after a run, after your soccer practice, basketball practice, you're gonna get in that position, maybe three sets of 15, and you're just gonna kind of focus on elongating the spine. We're unraveling it, we're not just flexing it. A lot of times when people they get into this extension compression strategy, all they wanna do is round it, but they're not necessarily turning on the appropriate muscles, they're just kind of getting through those passive structures. So by this, we're able to kind of activate the anterior abdominal wall, kind of the 360 degree, degree core, and we're able to shut off those overactive extensor musculature. So rather than just kind of passively hang out into the other direction, a lot of times people just do need a chest, we're actually able to unravel the spine, kind of turn on of the appropriate muscles within our core to kind of shut those off rather than just flex them in that position. So if you have any questions about the extension compression strategy, I would be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm gonna cue you into Dr. Rich Olm's YouTube page. He's doing a ton of stuff for trunk stability right now. It's Athlete Enhancement on YouTube. So check him out um, and we'll be coming up with more videos kind of talking about this extension compression strategy because it's something that I see a lot in the clinic and particularly in my athletes down at Creighton University. Thanks.